Hey guys, we're gonna do something a little bit different today. You'll notice I've got this microphone here and my computer. Let me explain. For those of you who are new to this, we used to do a show called D News Plus, Seeker Plus, and we usually come across topics that are just too big to cover in our normal episode length. So this is our way to talk about those things for a longer period of time and get more into the research. The thing is, it's a little different. There's no B-roll, there's no music, it's just you and me and some research. So let's try this out. Today we're gonna to talk about personality, where it came from, who invented it and why, how we're gonna determine what personality even means and what personality tests and types and traits, what those things are, all the letters that we use to describe personality, A, B, C, D type personalities, E, N, F, J's or whatever, all sorts of things. Please subscribe so you can get this episode and also the next episode, which will come one week from today. So let's kick into it. Firstly, what is personality? How do you define personality? The American Psychological Association, or APA, defines personality as, quote, an individual differences in characteristic patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. It's essentially how we operate as humans. Personality is built of traits or characteristics, and it's a response to people and situations out in the world. However you talk to people or interact with others, those are all semblances or parts of your personality. And we use words to describe this personality because it's kind of nebulous, right? We've got confident, we've got laid back, we've got outgoing, we've got picky, you know? All of these are different ways to try and put a box around something that doesn't inherently have a box. Personality is a culmination of all of these different traits. And it's also a product of our environment and also inherited tendencies. The environmental aspect would be how your parents have treated you, how you grew up, uh, your experiences, your thoughts. Your inherited parts of your personality are, say, your dad's nervousness or your mom's positive outlook, things that you might have gotten from your parents. And these traits you get by being around your parents, but also some of it could be genetic. We're going to get back to that in a little bit. And these come from elements in our childhood. So things like shy versus outgoing, those are going to be shaped by your experiences and maybe be passed down from your family, but it's likely a nature versus nurture argument at some point. And these things can change. They develop throughout your childhood and through adulthood. And in fact, in teens and adulthood is when people try and figure out their own personalities and start making specific decisions to classify themselves. By the mid to late 20s, personality is thought to be pretty much stable. So there are different personality types. Type A, B, C, and D. I know you don't really hear about C and D, but they exist. Type A, you've probably heard of a lot. It's very popular on the internet. Things like competitive, driven, and anxious would be used to describe type A personalities. It would make you think of more hostile or aggressive people, people who are workaholics or leaders or go-getters. Uh, those are all things that kind of we use to draw that box around type A. Type B are more easygoing, more tolerant, creative, imaginative. You would think things like artists, musicians, creative problem solvers. Type C personalities are patient, unassertive, appear easygoing, but internalize frustration and anger. So you would think somebody who is serious and analytical, potentially a loner. Unfortunately, A and B get a lot of the love. C and D, we just don't talk about as much. They're smaller groups, it would seem. Type D is a reserved, irritable. They worry a lot, more pessimistic. Uh, you would think someone like a negative worry wart kind of personality. But where did these come from? A, B, C, and D. What happened there? They all originated from diagnosing illnesses. Things like heart attacks and cancer, coronary heart disease in general. Cardiologist Dr. Meyer Friedman and Dr. Ray H. Rosenman kind of accidentally coined the term type A personality way back in the 1950s. They were studying the causes of heart attacks, and they looked at patients in their waiting room. Some of those patients were waiting very patiently. Others were more anxious and were more tense. The anxious, tense patients wore down the front of their chairs, they were unable to sit still, they were ready to go, and they did what any scientist would do when they saw these two types of people, they started to study them. So they did a nine-year study with over 3,000 men, and they found anxious, tense patients were more prone to heart attacks. They called these people type A, or really they called their behaviors type A behaviors. 
Friedman disagreed with calling them personality types. He preferred the term type A behavior because he thought type A personality sounds like something you can't change. It's actually more personal. Whereas a behavior, you can always fix or alter. He did originally diagnose himself as type A though, so a little confusing there. And he said he worked hard at becoming what they called a type B, especially after he had two heart attacks. So, you know, a little personal story there from him. Types C and D in the personality spectrum, I didn't even know these existed, to be honest. Uh, we found these while we were doing the research, and it's part of the reason we decided to talk to you about this. It's a much lesser known set of personality types. And again, type C is the appearing calm and collected on the outside, but they internalize their anger and frustration in general. And this was named by uh, somebody named Dr. Lydia Temeshock and Henry Dreher in a 1984 study. I don't know if I pronounced their names right. Personality type C is a little more likely to develop cancer, particularly melanomas. Unlike types A and B, this was introduced as personality type C. And then of course there's type D personalities, which again, a refresher, is reserved and openly negative, more pessimistic people. This was coined by Dr. Johan Denolay, a psychologist in a 1996 study. He found this type of personality is more likely to develop coronary heart disease and three times more likely to have a heart attack, which is surprising because type A also more likely to have heart attacks. The studies looked at coronary heart disease and correlated it with this type D personality and found a four times higher risk of death than other personality types. So negative thinking, not so great. Like type C, the psychologist here called this a personality type. So kind of breaking with the idea that it's a type A or B behavior. It's interesting that the types uh, internalize emotions, right? A lot of these personalities, again, are us trying to draw a box around something that already exists out there in nature. But it seems that the negative ones do have a higher incidence of illness based on these studies. Of these, it seems like type B is the one to try and be like. No pun intended. Maybe it's the healthiest. They go with the flow, they don't stress themselves out too much. And that's just the overarching pop science part of personality type. And there are some psychological tests that you can take for personality, like Myers-Briggs. You've definitely done that one in something like a psychology class. Have you ever heard someone say that they're an ISTP or an ENFJ? Those are Myers-Briggs personality types, and each one of those letters has a meaning. It's all the rage in pop culture. So there are 16 personality types, each has four letters, and the letters come from two different measures of personality on the rubric. So either you're an E or an I, an extrovert or an introvert. You're intuitive or sensory, N or S. You're thinking or feeling, T or F. Judging, perceiving, J and P. And those all have specific criteria, but, and we'll get to some of the criticisms later, they're not perfect descriptors of every personality. It's just one way to look at it. So first, let's break them down. Introvert versus extrovert. This is how you recharge out in the world. It's not about being social or not being social. It's a little bit about how you recharge your batteries. Do you recharge by being around others or do you recharge by being alone? Intuitive versus sensory has to do with how you see the world. So do you see patterns and impressions or do you kind of try and perceive reality maybe as it is? I'm using finger quotes there. There's also thinking and feeling, which is how you make decisions. Do you use your head versus your heart? There's judging versus perceiving, which is how you deal with the outside world itself. Is it structured or is it more flexible? Uh, there are all these different things. And again, it's a way to put this box around your personality. So let me give you two examples really quick. ENTJ people, which are extrovert, uh, intuitive, thinking, and judging. Assertive, self-assured leaders are described as ENTJ. Strong organizational and communicational skills, that's not a word. And sometimes they're called commanders. And another example would be ISFP, that's introverted, sensory feeling and perceiving. So in that case, it'd be loyal to values and beliefs, a person who's curious, artistic, and sensitive. And they're sometimes referred to as adventurers. I personally have taken Myers-Briggs many times. I have a degree in behavioral psychology for my undergrad, and I was described as an ENFP uh, in one test. And then another time when I was in graduate school, I took it and I was an ENTJ. So again, none of these things are set forever. These are diagnostic tools to help us understand 
ourselves. Myers-Briggs was developed by Isabel Myers and her mom, Catherine Briggs, during World War II, and it was more or less based on theories of the psychoanalyst Carl Jung, which are objective, self-reported kind of studies. The thing is, they ask you all these questions, and then they put you into each of these boxes. And each of these things are continuums. You can be some introvert and some extrovert. That's okay. And you click on this every time you see a BuzzFeed list. You know you do, you know I do, especially when it's stuff like introvert and extrovert. They're very misunderstood terms. They don't mean that you're only a quiet person or you're a boisterous, loud, annoying jerk. What they mean is, again, how you recharge your batteries. It's not about whether you're talkative or quiet. Most people, depending on their mood and their situation, are both talkative or quiet. It's not about whether you hate people or hate being around people or hate crowds or love people or love going to concerts. That doesn't describe this at all. And that fits with all of these different measures of personality. They're more continuums than they are kind of islands, right? If there weren't terms like introvert and extrovert, how would we describe how we recharge our batteries? Millennials love to find these labels for ourselves. We love to help kind of break down our world in this way. But before I crap on it too much, there is some hard science here. There actually is some. So let's start with the science of personality traits. It's still in the early stages, and most of the traits are thought to be based on our environment, but there are some genes that influence personality traits like self-confidence, mental toughness and perseverance, self-control and good decision-making. There are things in our genetic code that can influence those. Some genes dictate traits like in 2016, they discovered genetic links for the big five personality traits, which we've mentioned, extroversion, neuroticism, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience. The genes are, if you wanna go look them up for some reason, WSCD2 and PCDH15 connected to extroversion versus introversion. Then there's gene L3, MBTL2, and the chromosome 8P23.1, and they're connected to neuroticism versus calmness and peace. And depending on which genes you have switched on, you might be more likely to be one or the other thing. Earlier in 2016 as well, in Amsterdam, researchers found what they called the happiness gene, which in Dutch would be hen, or just happiness gene, because the Dutch mostly speak English. Parts of the human genome were connected in this study to explain the differences in how each of us experience happiness, which is pretty cool. Uh, separately, a twin study showed that genes play a key role in determining personality traits, things like social skills and learning ability. And separately, again, genes could dictate, they think, based on all of these different studies that we found, overall happiness and success, as well as our friend group, all dictated or at least influenced by our genetic code. Super cool, right? The APA says, to kind of bring it all back, there are two ways to analyze personality. Individual characteristics, like whether you are shy or irritable, versus various traits as a whole, also known as the whole self. Next week, we're gonna talk more about the science behind these, because some of the personality types that you click on, or that you have maybe even done, have been pretty much debunked. A lot of them show up in pop culture all around the place, all around the world, all around everywhere. It's crazy. Come back next week to find out more about that. In the end, just remember, personality is a collection of things that help you understand yourself just as much as they can help other people understand you. So when you see a personality test, try and think of the science behind it, but also remember it probably doesn't have that much. And come back next week to find out exactly how much science some of these personality tests do actually have. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know down in the comments how you feel about personality tests. And let us know what your Myers-Briggs type is. I'm sure you can find a million tests online and do it yourself. Again, ENFP or sometimes ENTJ. Always E. Always. Thanks for watching. I'm Trace. Come find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. You can find the show at Seeker. Let us know what you thought of this format as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.